Hey everyone, I'm Adam Kelly. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the very high-level basics of the YOLACT instant segmentation neural network, and then I will take you through a Google Collab notebook that'll allow you to run inference with YOLACT and then process your own images and videos if you'd like. You can find this tutorial at immersivelimit.com and you can always find these tutorials if you just click on tutorials or you can follow the link that I'll post in the description of the video. So YOLACT is a basically a new computer vision algorithm and I want to make it clear I did not come up with this. This is done by some really brilliant researchers and that's why at the top of this tutorial I put a couple of links. This is the original research paper, YOLACT Real-Time Instance Segmentation and YOLACT++ Better Real-Time Instance Segmentation. Basically they published this first paper early-ish in 2019 and then this one they published at the very end of 2019 in December. And so I just want to give a big thanks to those authors, Daniel Bolya, Chang Zhou, Fan Yi Jiao, and Yang Jiali. So what it is, uh, let's go to the research paper. This would be this one. Uh, and they, let's just read the, couple, the first couple sentences here. We present a simple, fully convolutional model for real time, greater than 30 frames per second, instant segmentation that achieves competitive results on MS Coco, evaluated on a single Titan XP, which is significantly faster than any previous state-of-the-art approach. So just to break that down a little bit, uh, fully convolutional, it's just a type of neural net uh, that is used to process images. Uh, instance segmentation is where you uh, convert, basically, let me hop back to this. So looking at this picture, it's where you get not only a bounding box, but you also are able to separate the background from the foreground. So here, this giraffe is shaded in red, you can see that it's not a perfect outline. It kind of overestimated that these pixels in here were belonging to the giraffe, and then it didn't realize that this part of its tail belonged to the giraffe. But it's done a very good job of separating the difference and saying, okay, all these pixels belong to the giraffe. So that's instant segmentation. And then it says it achieves competitive results on MS Coco. So MS Coco is a data set of images. So let me show you really quick, cocodataset.org. This is a data set of images, and you can kind of see some samples here that are uh, marked by humans. So they've given these images to people, and then those people have taken the images and have turned them into something um, that's usable by a neural network. So this person, for example, you can kind of explore the data set. These are all the different categories that belong in here. There's 80 different categories. For example, there's, let's see, uh, looks like 10 different animals here. Um, but you can see that what they've done is they've created this data set with uh, shaded in regions for each person that shows up in it right here. But there's also a skateboard and uh, looks like a dog and a backpack. So that's, that's the Coco data set. That's what they're talking about here. Evaluated on a single Titan XP, that's a big, beefy graphics card. So uh, that gives you an idea. You're not going to be able to run this YOLACT segmentation on a mobile device. It's just not going to happen right now. Um, these Titan XP graphics cards cost over $1,000, and that's just the graphics card. You also need a big PC to go with it. So, um, you know budget maybe two thousand dollars for a decent computer that can run this at their full 30 frames per second you don't need to have a computer that good to achieve reasonable frame rates you know maybe in the 10 to 20 range i uh, just wanted to say that so they then they say moreover we obtained this result after training only one gpu we accomplished this by breaking instance segmentation into two parallel subtasks so I'm not going to go into a lot of detail here because, frankly, I don't understand it uh, all the way and I wouldn't feel confident describing it just yet. But they say, one, generating a set of prototype masks, and two, predicting per-instance mask coefficients. 
So that's not terribly meaningful right now uh, to me or probably to you, but I just wanted to scroll down and show you the architecture that they used for this. And my understanding of it is that they're using what's called an FPN backbone, so a feature pyramid network backbone. So kind of what that means is they take an input image, so this is representing their input image, and then they feed it into a fully convolutional neural network background. Um, they're using ResNet 101 right here. So ResNet is just this really long neural network that passes the image through tons of layers, and that's what's represented here. This is a simplified version of it. There's actually 101 layers in ResNet 101. And what happens is at certain points, it pulls out the result um, before it's fully processed. And then it passes it into this feature pyramid, which is sort of a simplified um, processed version of these images at different sizes. So it has different scales that it's looking at this image so that it can see things that are different sizes. If there was a person in the foreground, sort of like up close, and then also one in the background, those are two very different size uh, images within the image. One is, you know, one person might be 20 pixels tall and the other person might be 300 pixels tall, and it needs to detect both of those. So that's kind of what's happening here. And then traditionally, you just find those and you predict what those classes are. That's kind of what's happening in this prediction head here. It's looking at all those different scales and making predictions. And this NMN or NMS is, um, I'm blanking on what it stands for, but essentially what it does is it takes, if you have multiple detections in an area, let's say this person was detected like three times and just slightly overlapping boxes, it will reduce that down to just one bounding box. Then you have the protonet here, and the protonet does something that I've never seen before, uh, really interesting. It sort of makes these prototype masks and tries to guess what the mask is in at the same time that it's predicting, and then it combines those in a way that makes this mask. And just a really quick to go down into the protonet, um, it's down here, these are these prototype masks, and uh, it's it's creating something, I mean, I'm not even going to try to explain this really, but it's basically creating these sort of pseudo masks and then it combines them to make, make an intelligent mask decision. Um, I'm hoping to understand this in more detail and be able to create a video that explains this, but for now, that's all you get. And then I'll just show really quick some examples. Um, here are some different examples from the data set. Really nice masking on all of these. Um, quite impressive. And then back to this, the video that uh, I shared, you can view this as well. So it's just a giraffe uh, video that I took last summer. And you can see that uh, this was processed. I think it took, I think it was about 20 frames per second that this was processed. Um, and then, you know, you can see this pretty good result of this giraffe. And then I want to point out as I pan to the left, you're going to notice some detections over here and it thinks those are sheep. And the reason why it thinks those are sheep, and there's like a bench over there, um, is because it doesn't actually know what rocks are. Uh, I wanna show this Coco data set again. There's nothing in here that is a rock. So if there was a rock in an image, then the people who were annotating this data set just ignored it. So the, it's seen sheep before. Um, so it knows what a sheep is and it just thought that those rocks looked kind of like sheep. So, I mean, that's not too surprising, actually. Let's see if I, yeah, I mean, that that kind of looks like a rock in, in, this, in that video. So that's it for kind of how YOLACT works. Uh, let's go into the actual Google Collab tutorial itself. So I'm going to click on this. I'm going to open it in a new tab, actually, so I middle clicked. And then this is going to open in Collab. Uh, you may need to sign in to get the full features of this. I don't know off the top of my head. But you'll see this Open in Playground button, so you'll need to click that. And as that's loading, I just want to show you the uh, GitHub for this, this uh, neural network, 
I didn't make this either. We're just using it. So it's this, uh, it's by D. Bolia and it's called Yolact. So there's a link to this in the collab notebook right here. So the first thing you need to do is this step here. You need to go to runtime setup and choose runtime, change runtime type and choose GPU. So this is critical. It won't work otherwise. Uh, so you go to runtime, change runtime type, and you make sure it's set to GPU uh, if it's not already. And now we can start running it. So what you can do is click on this first code cell and you, you can either click the play button or you can do shift enter. And it's giving me a warning message and says it was made by me, so I'm gonna run it. And then the first thing it'll do is install some uh, Python uh, necessities here. Uh, and one of these is PyCoco tools, um, which sort of does some work on the Coco dataset. Fortunately, Google Collab has this PyCoco tools already, in already installed. And actually, all these things are already installed. They've done a really nice job of creating these collabs so that they're um, ready to go. If you're running this outside of Google Collab, you might not be able to uh, get through this step quite so easily. Then we're going to clone this Git repository into the file system of this notebook. So I'm going to do Shift Enter. Okay, and now we have to do this DCNV2. So this is an improvement that they made in Yolact++ so that more recent research paper that they came out with. Um, but it's actually an external uh, library. So they put this external code into their Git repository and then you have to run it. This, when I tried to set it up myself on my Windows machine, this is the stop or this is the part that I got stuck on. And actually part of the reason why I switched over to Collab is because Collab are Linux machines in the cloud, basically. So um, I have Linux on my computer. I was just too lazy to switch over to it. So I decided to try Collab and it worked pretty well. So uh, this might take a minute to um, install, but once it does, then we can use it. And fortunately, Collab works pretty well with it. And then this next part, as this is still going, uh, is going to be to download the pre-trained weights. So the uh, pre-trained weights, they've, if you go over to look at the Yolact uh, readme, then it shows all of these installation steps, actually. Um, one of them for running evaluation is to download these pre-trained weights, meaning that the neural network has already been fully trained. And uh, we're downloading one of these, but it's actually a Google Drive link. And getting a Google Drive file into your Google Collab is kind of hard to do if you don't have a helpful uh, Git repository like I found from this Chen Tinghao person. He created this uh, really helpful uh, Git repository that can just get a file. So if you're trying to train with some other weights or something like that, you're going to have to figure out um, how to just get the ID of the file. And then you basically just call this one Python command. So now we have this. Uh, it's saved in the content directory, I think. Uh, actually, I put it in Yolact weights. That's where it needs to be for the eval um, function to work. Next, we're going to get some test images. So these test images are from the Coco dataset. Basically what I did was I went here and I picked some that had uh, different uh, interesting images. So I you know, clicked airplane and then searched for it and then I just copied the URL. You can give it whatever URLs you want or you can try and copy some of your own images from your Google Drive and put them in here. But this is just the straightforward way of uh, getting them really quick and putting, dumping them all into a file. So it's, it's currently downloading all these images and now it's done. See, it saved all of these to content slash test images. Now we're going to run inference on the images. So 
this is the interesting part, in my opinion. The rest was just kind of set up. So we're going to, let's see, we're making directory for output images, and then we run inference. So this is really the most important part. So we're calling Python eval.py. So that is inside of the YOLACT Git repository. It's just a, a Python file that they made to evaluate images or videos. And it's a trained model. Uh, so we point it to that model that we downloaded from uh, that Google Drive link. So that's just this. Then we have to give it a config. Um, if you don't give it a config, it tries to guess and it seems to work. It just went a little bit slower, I think maybe. Um, so this config is the YOLACT plus ResNet 50 config. And I found these, I can't remember Exactly. It was just in the Git repository. I, I looked for the configuration options, and, and this was one of them. And then you can give it a score threshold. So this right here, I suspect, is why I started seeing those sheep, uh, because they were a score, even though they, it wasn't 100% sure that they were sheep, um, it was higher than this score threshold. So if you wanted to experiment with that and maybe change it to like 80% confidence or something like that, you might have better results and it might leave out those sheep. And then the top K uh, is how many of these uh, objects to find per image. So it's going to find up to 15 things in the image. It won't go beyond that. So if you had 100 apples in a picture, it would only find 15 of them most likely. And then you pass in your images and the format that they use here uh, is you give it a folder of your test images and uh, colon and then a folder for output images so that's that's how this is working so we can run inference and it's going to run through and do those and process all of those images for us and save them as output png files and then in this next step we're going to display them. And this is just using um, the CV2 library and matplotlib to display all these images that are now in the output folder. Okay, so you can see here, this is the first image that it has detected basically all of the birds in here that are of reasonable size. And once they get a little too small, then it doesn't uh, find them as well. But it's doing a pretty good job. You can see it kind of left out the head of this pelican. Um, but if we look at some of these other ones, the bears are pretty accurate. Uh, it figured out the boat. It detected the people. Um, this one here, again, you can see that if things are too small, then it doesn't really work. Uh, this image is pretty blown up. Um, so really, I mean, this from the pixels, it only looks like it's maybe five to 10 pixels tall. So I just think that that's too small for it to properly detect in an image. Um, but I mean, it's it's pretty impressive what they've been able to accomplish with this, especially with YOLACT++, which seems to be quite fast and uh, quite accurate. And I do want to point out that you can see here it, it detected a single banana, even though there's you know several bananas here. So this may not be the best uh, tool to use if you're trying to, for example, count the number of bananas in a bowl um, or some other similar task. You know, counting cells uh, in a petri dish or something like that. I just don't think it's really suited for that task, and it's certainly not trained for it. Now, rather than run through the inference on a video portion of this, um, I'll just show you that it's here. Um, I've given the command for how to um, how to download your own video from Google Drive, how to run. It's the same. It's essentially the same command for YOLACT eval, and then you just give it a video instead, and then it processes the video. And when I processed it, it looks like it was only getting 13 frames per second, um, which kind of tells you that maybe the GPU that uh, Google Collab is giving you for free isn't a Titan, which would not be terribly surprising that they wouldn't have just a bunch of thousand dollar graphics cards waiting for us to use them for free. Um, but still, it's pretty impressive that we can achieve this frame rate um, 
while it's processing videos. And then you're able to download the output file. So that's, that's essentially it for the tutorial. Um, I would love to hear your feedback on it. I know that uh, people will be curious to know if they can create their own uh, data set and uh, do uh, their own training. And yes, the answer is yes, of course you can. Um, but uh, not in this tutorial. That's going to be another tutorial, I think, to get that working. So stay tuned for that. And uh, hopefully this was helpful.